this data set is the data set that you would be using for your assignment. And what we're going to do is two, two tasks. Um, notice that I didn't clean it. You really should clean it first. But for this example, I'm not going to clean the data because there's two things I want to do. I want to boost the data, and we're going to talk about that. And then I want to pick what features would be important. In fact, let's do that in the opposite direction. Let's pick our features first. And what does that mean? Picking our feature means we can't use all the attributes. There's often too many. And there's many ways that we do feature selection. Sometimes we may get rid of columns that don't have too much data, or we may want to combine attributes. But we also can run some correlations to see which ones are important in predicting, um, in this case, whether this person opened a new credit card or not. In Excel, the way that you do this is by using the table tools. And remember that if you are not within the table, those table tools go away. So make sure that you click and you are within the table. Notice, table tools, no table tools. Table tools, so you definitely want to be inside the table. And we are going to go over to um, Analyze. And we're going to ask to an analyze key influencers. And we want to tell it that we're interested in finding out what influences somebody opening a new credit card. We also have the, the availability of selecting what keys, so we don't want ID to be thought of. Um, we'll leave the rest of them in there. We don't want new credit card in there either. Again, I would do this after I've cleaned the data. This is just for examples, but you definitely wouldn't do this with, with uncleansed data like this one. But here we go. Okay, so basically it's going to compare those fields that are more important to not opening a credit card to those that are. Uh, we can add a report. It'll just create a new tab for us. It just copies and pastes the, this table over here. But when we look at this, we can see the key influencers. So what, what we, wanted, we might want to do is to actually filter out just the ones. This one is who opened a credit card, right? So it looks like we want to keep branch transactions, internet transactions, consumer loans, and so on. The bigger this value, the bigger this bar, the bigger the relative impact. So as, as we go down, the impact becomes less and less. Um, unfortunately, in Excel, then, we have to do this by hand. We have to go by hand and, and remove the other attributes that we don't think are important. Of course, we wouldn't use just this. We would use combinations of things. But I did want to demonstrate to you the way to do feature selection in Excel. Next, let's talk about boosting. In the case of this data set, if we look at the distribution, if we go back to the data mining tab and look at the distribution of new credit card flag, I'm going to click this tab here. It's giving me like if it was a continuous variable, which it's not. I'm going to do it this way. Notice that so many more are non-credit card openers. So I may want to oversample so that there's a little more of the new credit card equals one in there. So it's almost like turning up the volume on those. Um, there's some risk to that, which we talk about in class. But in this video, I want to show you how you would do this. Now, my suggestion would be that you first split your data set. Let's delete this thing. You first split your data set into train and test. And why is that? Well, because we want to test on data that looks the most like the real data. So even though we're going to boost to turn up the volume on new credit card equals one, we still want to test on data that looks like realistic data because our goal is eventually to point this towards a data set where we don't want the answer. And it's going to look like this data set. It's not going to look like our boosted data set. So let's quickly. Um, split our data set to train and test, which we sh which I have shown you in a, in a different vi video. So I'm going to go very quickly through this. So now I've got train and test. Now what I want to do is boost my train, right? Test is going to stay the same. This is the data set that I'm going to use to test my models. 
but I will boost train. So I will come back here to the train tab and now I'm going to say sample data. And I'm going to say I want to oversample to balance my distribution. Balance the distribution of what? Of my target variable, new credit card. So I have to tell it what it is that I want to sample. So I say new credit card flag. I'm interested in those values that are equal to one. And I can tell it what the percentage be. Right now, right now it looks more like a 98 to um, 70, 30 seems high to me. I would say 20%. Um, sample size, I don't like to be limited. Um, you would have to do the math to figure out because basically you're keeping all your your new credit card equals one given the amount of rows that we have. So I'm going to just put an extra zero in there. It's going to give me an error, but at least I'll know that 20% of the data is a new credit card, but it's not going to throw away any information about new credit card flag equals one. And we'll call this boosted data. See, now it told me I didn't have enough data, which is, uh, which is, I knew that it was coming because I didn't have enough, but now I know that I used all my new credit card equals one. So I now have train, boosted data, and test. Boosted data is a subset of train, where if I go look at the distribution of new credit card flag, I now have a more even representation of new credit card equals one. I can make this go higher at the risk of then having too many false positives, and we'll talk about that more when we talk about evaluation.